Welcome to our presentation. My name is Zheng Yu Wu. I'm currently a PhD candidate from the Beijing Institute of Technology. And this paper is largely concerned for the large scale graph, uh, graph learning on the um, GNN models. And we term our methods as the adaptive topolo topology aware propagation uh, using the ATP as the acronym. So um, our methods is also like both motivated by the theoretical applications and also uh, through our empirical studies, I'll introduce the first part. Um, and since um, the scale of the graph has correlated with uh, the different realistic demands, you have like molecule data sets, which is essentially concerned um, for discovering the new proteins. And also you have a very large scale um, social graph database, uh, which is essentially used for uh, um, the social analytics. And as the graph scales become larger, you also introduce very intricate topological information to the local nodes, and which will make the graph propagation uh, much harder to predict the optimal performances uh, in terms of the, um, the, node, the node level predictions. And there are two general um, strategies in terms of handling the scalable GNN models. The first is the sampling based, and second is the couple based. But both strategies are I treat all the nodes in the graph equally and using the unified graph propagation operators, uh, which has become um, one of the central point of our methods. So you also have a node-wise propagation optimization strategies, which trying to improve the node level predictive performances from the diverse perspectives. Um, and one of those components in the first equation is the unified um, graph propagation equations. And you can see there is a kernel coefficient guide the graph propagation throughout the pro whole process. But currently, in all the existing works, it, it is treated as the hyperparameters, which requires the human fine tuning to achieve, uh, to achieve the optimal performances. And in our work, we try to discover, is there any possibility to make it to become adaptive mechanism without the human effort, and also choice um, the most appropriate kernel coefficient value for all the nodes in the graph. So our research is fundamentally initiated with one uh, with the empirical studies, um, and I will briefly talk about the whole um, the whole experiments. But we also have like a whole page discussing it in our publications. So basically, we assign three different kind of kernel coefficient values to all kind of nodes in the graph um, in arbitrary fashions, which equals to one and a half, a one and zero in our cases, and. Uh, we also categorized all nodes in the graph according to their degree of connectivities into the low degree nodes or high degree nodes. Um, and I would like you to focus on the right hand side of the graph, which is in the scalable scenarios where we use the OGBM products as our um, data sets. And then you can see um, that for all the high degree nodes, um, there is a very severe performance degradation, no matter which kernel coefficient you are choosing for the high degree nodes. Um, and um, for the high degree nodes, even among those three, uh, if you choose a higher, a larger coefficient, uh, kernel coefficient, you will achieve a much better performances. And for the low degree nodes, if you choose uh, a smaller R value, actually will achieve the better performances compared to the other options. So we get two key insights from our empirical studies. The first is that the propagation on the high degree nodes lead to the high bias propagation and consequently bring the negative impact on the predictive performances. And the second is we're trying to find the most appropriate propagation operators that are essential, that, that is essential for effectively capturing the relevant uh, local nodes context to improve the nodes predictive performances. Oh, sorry. And our framework is basically can break down into two steps. Um, the first is to employ the masking mechanism to correct potentially high bias propagation for the high degree nodes. And the second is to find is to invent an uh, adaptive mechanism for each node in a way-free manner from the local perspective. So our methods actually does not involve in the learning process. So we don't introduce the extra uh, computational complexity to the learning process. And this page is briefly talking about the theoretical proof for the motivation of our masking mechanism. Um, so if you look at the inequality function in the theorem one, you can see the left hand side represent the upper bound for the convergence rate. If you want to increase that, um, the obvious answer is that we have to increase the value on the right hand side. And there are basically two ways to do it. The first is to increase the value of the lambda two, and the second is to decrease the degree of the current nodes. 
So remember, we're targeting the high degree nodes specifically. So we're trying to reduce the degree of the high degree nodes to achieve the, the, the second option that we have. Um, and also it depends on the lambda too. If we decrease the average degree of the graph, we also decrease the differences between the largest entry value and the second largest entry value. So by the, so by reducing the degree of the high degree nodes, we can actually achieve both to increase uh, the convergence, the convergence efficiency for the um, propagation on high degree nodes. And also there is a side benefit come with the masking um, mechanism is because in a large graph, the intricate topology does not always follow the homophilia assumptions um, making the nodes at the center of the graph having, uh, having a very high level of connectivities to be misled by some of those uh, neighboring information. And also unlike the high resolution image and the rich taxes, um, the graph learning often involves sparsely informative features. So our masking mechanism in some way regularized the connection of the misleading informa information into the high degree nodes. And the second step um, is trying to improve the representation on the local nodes context. And our objective is to assign a much smaller R value to the low degree nodes and a much higher R value to the high degree nodes um, through the adaptive mechanism. And there are three different perspectives we're trying to encode. So basically we encode the positional information to the nodes for them to choose the most appropriate value for the kernel coefficient. Um, and the first is the degree-based position encoding. It's very intuitive to understand because if the nodes is at the center of the graph, it will be highly inference during the propagation by its neighboring nodes due to the high degree of connectivity. So we would like them to have a much higher or much larger value of the kernel coefficient, give them the capability to discern from their neighbors and also we draw um, the perspective from the spectral um, realm. So we're trying to use the engine vector based positional encodings to identify how densely um, the high degree nodes is connected by their neighbors. And for those nodes uh, which possess higher inference during the propagation, we will also assign them with much larger kernel coefficient uh, value. And from the local perspective, um, we also draw our intuition from the social network uh, graph data sets because um, for the high degree nodes, they're most likely to be found in one of the clustered communities um, which have uh, self a very uh, enriched semantic context. So we would like to utilize those and using the, cl uh, the clustering techniques to, um, to encode the, the local topological information to the nodes. And, and, and in the same way of thought, we also gave the nodes with stronger connectivities to a larger kernel coefficient values. So basically, we just combine these three perspectives together with normalized factors to have adaptive kernel coefficient value, and we replace those in the previously mentioned unified graph propagation operators. And, and the agency matrix and degree matrix has also been altered because of our masking, um, masking mechanism on high degree nodes. And our message as a, pl as a plug and play um, optimization strategy can be seamlessly integrated into any GN and also orthogonal to the existing MP optimization strategy to improve their performances as well. And this is basically the procedural code um, to introduce how to formulate or how to proceed our message in steps. Uh, so in the experiments, we can see um, as the plug and play stra um, optimization strategies, our methods combined with existing GNN models can largely improve their performances, especially if you look at, look at the models such as cluster GCN, we can actually make this model uh, be ap ap applicable to the uh, large scale scenarios with our help. Um, and also we compare it to the other MP optimization strategies by combining them to one single model sign. And we can see that ATP actually gave the best um, performance boost and if you look at the sign star and the S2GC star, it's to note that we integrate ATP with Scala and NDM, NDM which are two MP-based uh, optimization strategy. And you can see if using our ATP's unified graph operators to replace theirs, we can have much better performances. And in the Appalachian studies, we proved that every component of our methods have its own merits and also we again, assigned four different values to, um, to the kernel coefficient arbitrarily. And, it said, and so if you look at the graph on the right-hand side, you can see that um, our adaptive mechanism outperforms all those different values that we chose um, for the kernel coefficients. 
And we also do in the running efficiency test um, because our mask correction mechanisms help to reduce the edges uh, to, to the high degree nodes, our method is actually much more efficient uh, and also our uh, accuracy has not been compromised. So the last experiments we want to introduce is the sparsity test. Um, basically, uh, combined with our methods, um, we can give much more uh, performance boost even under scenarios if there is like missing features or labels or edges. And the best performances was given when we integrate ATP to the other optimization methods. All right, that's the end of my presentation here. I'm open to more questions if you have any.